Okay, welcome back. Right, this is the model that I've done using Z spheres. So I've opened ZBrush up and um, created these Z spheres. If I uh, change him now to an adaptive skin or an adaptive skin preview, we can see the model. This is perfectly fine for modeling. So I'm going to show you how to do this kind of a model quickly and then you can take it on your own to try and achieve this kind of effect. So let's start off, open your ZBrush 4 up, go to Tools, go to Z-Sphere. Now we're in Z-Sphere, I'm going to press X to activate symmetry, or come up to Transform, Activate Symmetry. I'm going to lock it by um, changing the angle, by actually clicking and dragging, you can move the Z-Sphere around with the left hand mouse or the tablet. I'd like to point out that I'm using a graphics tablet and I'm using a mouse. And the reason I use mo I, reason I use both is because sometimes with the hard surface modeling, you want you don't want any pressure sensitivity that you get from the graphics tablet. So I switched to the mouse. Uh, of course, when I'm doing cuts and just um, doing gestures and basic basic modeling, I'll be using the uh, graphics tablet to do that. I suggest you go for something like a Wacom. Uh, with the levels of uh, sensitivity up to about 2048 or something levels of, of pressure. Some of the cheaper graphics tablets like the Apetac and those ones you get less sensitivity and they're still good, they're still, they're still brilliant for the price, you can't beat them but Wacoms are far superior, that's why everybody uses them and basically they're uh, you, you need to use a graphics tablet if you're doing sculpting in ZBrush and obviously doing Photoshop work uh, using the mouse is, is a bit like using a brick compared to a graphics tablet and only when you use one and start to fully appreciate features do you realize how good they are so it's a very good investment to get a graphics tablet I mean you can do everything with a mouse but um, it's just nowhere as uh, as, as free as using a graphics tablet and especially in Photoshop okay so we've got our z-sphere so at the moment if I press A on the keyboard you're just going to get sort of half a sphere I'm going to turn on my active symmetry and make sure that I am in the right place so what I did there was I just dragged this way to make sure that and hold the shift to make sure that I'm looking at it straight on very important and we're basically going to say this is the middle of the character so this is abdomen area I'm going to turn this around like this and I'm going to press shift and I'm going to make sure I'm in draw mode up the top here and I'm simply going to click in the middle and I'm going to drag that's one sphere then I'm going to go to the bottom I'm going to hold the shift and notice that if I come in here it will click together showing that I'm right in the center like that okay now I've got this I press A on my keyboard here we go we're starting to develop it now okay so for the arms I'm going to put those back to do the neck first. Come in the middle here. If you get that, it means it's taking it from the bottom one. So, what I suggest you do is just click outside and then it will lock it onto the top sphere. Let's do another one there. I'm going to do another one right on top. I might add more and then I'm going to do one slightly to the back. It doesn't really look too much like a figure at the moment, but it will. Well, what I can do now is go to scale, click on here, bring it down, click on the top one, bring that down, go to move up here, bring this down, press A on my keyboard, that's my head shape. Now I'm going to go to my side, and I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to drag a sphere out just where the shoulders would be. Oh, I need to make sure that I'm back in draw mode and there are shortcuts you can use Q for draw 
W for move, E for scale, and R for rotate. Handy shortcuts. So I won't be going up here no more. I'll be just uh, selecting the shortcuts. Now I drag out there. I do make sure you drag from the key spheres, which are these. If you drag here, it will create another sphere here. So you want to drag from the key ones, which are these light pink color ones. Let me do that again. Drag out. Then I'm going to drag out again, and I'm going to drag out again. I'm going to come to my side view. I'm going to grab the move. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to press A on my keyboard. And straight away, you can see that things are starting to work here. That's my base. He needs to come down a bit. Press A again. So I'm continually switching it back from from that to A. There we go. Now the legs. I'm going to put this here. Drag this out. Drag another couple out. Drag one out on top. Have a look at him in A. So I'm continually going back and forth and clicking to A and using the move tools. There we go. That's my kneecap area. It's not bad. If I want to scale, I can go to my scale tool, juice this down, and blow this up. The chest is going to be fairly big. Give him a bit more of a neck. Right now, I want to show you how to add a Z sphere. Just going to draw these sections you can subdivide them so you or you can create another sphere straight in here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that area and you'll see if another sphere has been put in there which I can scale down to make this neck a little bit more exact and move it up into the head a bit more it's a bit, going to be a bit sharper there notice there's a bit more detail now and now the hands which are always tricky to do so what I'm going to do for the hands, there's lots of different ways of doing this, but my method is to click out, drag a big sphere out like that, drag another one just to the right of it, which will be the main palm of the hand, and then I'm going to come this side and drag another one out for the thumb. And I'm going to have a look at that. That's not bad. Remembering, you know, you're going to flatten all this, so as long as the shape's correct, that's what you're interested in. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to take my draw size down, and I'm also going to take my focal shift to negative 93, just as low as you can go. And I'm going to put in my four digits. And make sure that you don't that you actually get it on the sphere and that you don't get it on another part of the finger joint that you just created. So I'll check him, he looks quite good. I'm going to do one for the thumb, thumb's a bit bigger.